Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This video is about logic functions and gates, so let's get started. Alright everybody, so let's talk about functions, okay? Specifically, let's try let's talk about logic functions, okay? So, the first one that we really need to think about, let's call it the not function. Now, the not function basically looks like this. Got it? So suppose we have an input A. Now the output, let's just call Y. Now Y is basically going to be a function of A. So we're going to say Y equals A bar. Now what does this mean? Bar. What does that bar mean? Basically it means the complement. When I say the complement, if you have a logical one, remember we only have ones and zeros in digital, right? If we have a one, the complement of one is zero. And if you have a zero, the complement of zero is a one, right? So in this case, we're going to say that y is the complement of a. And sometimes you hear that stated as a bar. That means there's a bar overhead. Sometimes you can even um, hear that termed as a naught, right? You're going to hear some people say that. But I'm going to try to use all the time anyway. I'm going to say this is a bar, okay? So let's let's look at this. this is another way to draw this by the way I don't see it very often but sometimes you might see this and it's the exact same thing this little round item here that's called an inverter bubble okay so be aware of that all right now, I'm going to remove that because I don't want to complicate things. I don't think there's any reason to. So, let's look at this further, all right? There's something called a truth table that's used with gates and functions, all right? So, if we look at the truth table over here, I'm sorry, I'm going to get the right... Truth table, got it? Now, we're going to list the inputs on the left. In this case, we have one input. It's A, right? Now, you know what? I'm going to bring this up here just to separate the inputs and the outputs. What's the output? The output is Y, correct? So, if A is 0, the output's going to be a 1, right? Because it's A bar. If A is 1, the output is going to be a 0. This right here that is a truth table, okay? Now, I'm going to be drawing this for each one of the logic functions I'm going going to discuss, okay? But just be aware, the truth table goes along with the logic functions, right? All right, so let's try the next one. This is what's called an AND gate. And the AND gate basically looks like this.
got it. Now here's your A and B. You have two inputs on this one. Your output is equal to what? Y. Now in this case, Y is equal to A dot B. So let's draw the truth table for this one, shall we? So if we have A, we have B, we have Y. Now let's go through this. If A and B are both zero, the output's going to be zero, isn't it? Now, suppose we say that B is one, A is zero. The output's still gonna be zero, isn't it? You know something, I think I uh, drew this line a little bit a little bit off there, didn't I? Okay, let's continue down now, all right? Now, let's draw another, what's another item here? If A is one and B is zero, the output's gonna be zero. And finally, what do we have here? One, one. Y is going to be one. So do you understand this? If you multiply A and B together, you're going to get Y, right? So anything times zero is zero. So zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. One times zero is zero, right? So you, you have basically each one of these, but one times one is equal to one, all right? So this is your truth table for your AND gate, all right? By the way, this is written, this is always in binary, right? But let's count here. If this was a binary number, let's write the decimal right here. What's the decimal right here? Well, zero, zero is zero, isn't it? One, one, zero is one. Zero, one is what? Two. One, one is three. Do you see how in the truth table, these inputs right here, these are written in a specific order. And if you convert these to decimal, with the right side being your least significant bit, and your left side being your most significant bit, right? If you convert these numbers to decimal, you're just counting down, or counting up, I'm sorry, sorry. You're starting from zero, and you go to one, two, three, etc. okay? So, now let's, let's think about this further, right? I'm gonna have to move this for space. What about this? What would you think if I wanted to make a three input? One here, one here, and one here, right? This is A, this is B, and this is C. And we come out to Y, all right? What's y going to be equal to? A dot B dot C, right? Why don't you try this right now? Pause the video and draw the truth table or write the truth table for the gate and then turn it back on. Then we'll do it together. Okay. 
I assume you all gave it a go. Let's let's give it a let's give it a try. So here, what are we doing? We're writing the truth table. What's the truth table for a three input AND gate? Well, first off, let's draw the inputs A, B, C. Bring this over here. I can keep the line straight. Now, I always draw a line there just to separate the inputs and the outputs, okay? And keep that line relatively straight. So let's first off, let's just write the inputs, right? So we have 0, 0, 0. What's after that? 1, 0, 0. Let's just do the decimal over here. So this is decimal 0, right? This is 1. The next one's going to be 2, isn't it? That's going to be 0, 1, 0. How about 3? 1, 1, 0. What's 4? 0, 0, 1. Then we have 5. What's that going to be? 1, 0, 1. Then we have 6. 0, 1, 1. Finally, 7. 1, 1, 1. Let me bring this down. Notice in the last row of a truth table, they're all ones. When you do that, but when you've, if you've counted up properly in, from zero all the way to the end, in this case it's seven, then you're going to have one, one, one. You've hit all the permutations that you can have for these input values, okay? By the way, do you notice a pattern here? Your least significant bit it goes zero one zero one zero one zero one see that and the next one goes zero zero one one zero zero one one and in this case your most significant bit goes zero 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 one 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 you'll see a lot of different patterns when you're writing truth tables it's kind of interesting now let's look at the out output what do you think the output's going to be basically it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now that makes sense, right? Because anything multiplied by 0 is 0, and there's a 0 in every one of these here, right? Except this one, right? So this is a 3 by 8 truth table because you have three inputs, right? One, two, three. And you have eight, or you can say eight, uh, co or three columns, I'm sorry, three columns there, right? Eight. And then you have eight rows starting at zero. Zero through seven, eight total, all right? So this is a three by eight. Got it? Now, Think about it. Suppose you didn't have a three input AND gate available. What, how could you make one? And the answer is yes. Let's look at combining these things. What do you think? So in this case, suppose we wrote this gate, this gate differently. We wrote one, two, coming into an AND gate. And then we have another gate right here. Here 
here's your A, here's your B, here's C. So let's, let's look at this. What's the output going to be right here? I say here, I mean at this point right here. What's the output going to be? It's going to be A dot B, right? Well, that turns out that's one of your inputs, isn't it? At this point, right? Because the output here is your input to this at gate one. Is your output from gate one is going to be one of your inputs on gate two, right? So you know that y is going to equal a dot b, and guess what? You have to include this input right here, don't you? So it's going to be a dot b dot c. Look at look at these two. They're the same thing. Truth table is identical, right? You just were able to make a three input AND gate out of two two input AND gates. While we're on this subject, do you think you could make a four input AND gate out of two input AND gates? Of course you could. You could just add another one, right? Just like I did here, this this right here could feed another gate and so on. I'm not going to do it, I've run out of space, but you get the idea. Think about it, if you're building a circuit and you want to minimize the space it takes, if you want to get a three a gate with three or four or how many inputs, an AND gate, you would have to put a, a totally additional separate chip on there to get that. But if you already had one with two input AND gates on it and you weren't using all those gates, you could simply make one and it would take less board space, which means the circuit could be smaller and it would use less power, right? So, now, I'm gonna go through one more here. And this one, let me just get rid of these right down here, how's that? The third one we're going to talk about in this video right here, in this video section, is OR. Now the OR gate looks like this. Right there. The thing is, these have little wing tips here, all right? There we go. Now, for this one, y is equal to a plus b, right? I'm sorry, I should use the term a or b. That's really the term, uh, okay? So, if you look at the truth table for this one, if we have A, we have B, let's draw the input side, right, this is Y. We have zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Get it? What are the outputs? The output for this one is going to be zero, one, one, one. Okay? So how you really read this, I put the plus sign there, that's how it's denoted, but it's actually, it's going to be, it's pronounced OR, okay, A or B. So if A or B is a 1, your output's going to be a 1, as you can see here, right? As opposed to the AND gate, where both A and B have to be 1 for it to be 1, right? Okay. So with the same argument, do you think that you can build a 
three input OR gate from two two input OR gates? If you said yes, you were correct. Why don't you pause the video right now and give it a try and then turn it back on and we'll draw it together. Okay, so let me just draw this for you right now. to bring these in a little bit for you to make it reasonable in size. That's the symbol. And this will be y equals a or B or C okay let me just draw this a little better this doesn't look quite right there it is <laughs> well folks the thing is, is is you gotta have a little wing there coming down that's the thing you gotta make sure you can see okay I tried to draw it there my drawing is not the greatest but let's let's draw the truth let's uh, first we're gonna do this we're going to make a three input OR gate out of two two input OR gates. So if we look at it, we'll just do it up here this time. Here's a two input OR gate, right? This comes out. What's this? This output here is what? A or B, right? Here's a C. And this output here this is going to be A B just like your RAN gate, isn't it? Here you have it. So You've learned quite a bit. We've talked about the not, the and, and the or, and we've discussed the truth table for each one. So, I don't think actually we did the truth table for the, for the three input or gate. Let's do that real quick. Okay, you have this drawn. Let's, why don't you pause the video and give it a try. And uh, let's and draw the truth table. Write the truth table for the, a three-input OR gate, and then we'll do it together. All right, here we go. Input A, input B, input C. Let's draw a line here. I'm going to try to keep this one nice and straight for you. Not bad, huh? And here's your output. So what are your inputs? Zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, and one, one, zero. It's a zero, I'm sorry, it should look like a zero. I'm drawing a little fast here. Now, what comes after this? Zero. Zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, and then one, one, one. Okay? So this is going to be zero, one, 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 one. Remember, for an OR gate, it's either A or B, or in this case, OR C, it has to be a 1 for the output to be a 1. And that's pretty much what we drew here. All right? All right. 
So I think now we're pretty much done with the basic gates, the three gates, the not, the and, and the or. Next, I'm going to discuss how to start combining gates. And I'll talk to you soon. I know. All right, everybody, let's talk about combining these gates. And we, when we combine these gates, we're going to get a, a derived logic function, OK? So let's first start by drawing an AND gate. And this is A. This is B. Now the output here what we were just talking about, right? A dot B, right? Now what's going to happen if I put another gate here and inverted gate? What's this going to be? Well, quite simply, Y will equal A dot B with a bar over all of it. Got it? That's basically what that means. Now, in the same way, if we draw an OR gate, the output here is going to be C plus D. I said that wrong. C or D. They used the plus sign there, obviously, between them. Now, what's going to happen to this? I simply put an inverter here. Sorry for my handwriting. Y will equal. A or B bar. Get it? We just combined two gates. So let's draw the truth table for an AND gate real quick. An AND gate would be... Why don't you do this while I'm doing it on the computer here for you. We know for an AND gate, we start out with... 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, right? Now for an AND gate, it was, it was what? Wasn't it 0, 0, 0, 1? Get it? But now, what's this going to be? Well, let's just draw this over here. I'm going to draw another you simply complement them. That's what this inverter does here. It complements the output. So this I would call Y bar. That's going to equal 1, 1, 1, 0. Get it? Let's do the OR, shall we? So with the OR gate, we can change this to C and D. So what's it going to be with an OR gate? What would be what would the output be? We're looking right here, by the way, just for the output of the gate, just like we looked up here before. We're just looking right down here. So this is where we're looking now. So if we're looking at the output of the OR gate, it would be 0, 1, 1, 1. Got it? Now, let's look at Y bar. Let's follow the same rule. You just invert or complement 
the value here. So y bar, in other words, at this point, this would be what? 1, 0, 0, 0. Get it? Now you're just starting to combine functions. This is rather, this is rather exciting. Because uh, this is when it gets, gets fun, right? Now let me show you something else here. Let's just take this one and move it down a little bit, shall we? Let's just erase this a little bit here so we have some room. Now let's draw this AND gate again the same way I drew it here. Instead of putting this inverter here, how this is normally drawn, here's your AND gate. This is A, this is B, and what they normally have right here, I'm going to erase this a little bit here, just to show you, they have what is called an inverter bubble, okay? So that inverter bubble, alright, we do this right here it's the same thing so this would be a dot b bar that would be the output okay now the same thing holds true for your nor gate or or gate by the way this is called a nand okay the N is stated when you have an inverter bubble there. Okay? Now, let's do this. I want you to pause the video and I want you to draw a NOR gate. Alright? Give it a try and then we'll do it together. Okay, so I'm drawing a NOR gate. So at this point, Actually, you can put that here or not, but how I've drawn the truth tables, that isn't accurate, so I'm going to pull that off there, right? So the output is going to be C or D bar, right? And this is called a NOR gate, okay? And the N comes from the fact that there's an inverter bubble right there at the end of it. All right? So, I want you to try to draw a three input NOR gate out of two two input NOR gates and an uh, two two input OR gates and an inverter. Give it a try. Pause the video and then we'll do it together. All right. So, think about it now. We're coming in here. C and D, right? Keep the same, we'll keep the same ones, same inputs. Now the output here, this is going to be C plus C or D, got it? Now that's going to go into the input of another. Or gate along with your third input. I'll call that one E. So 
So E is coming in, so you're going to have one input is going to be this, C or D, right? I'm just going to put parentheses around it. Then your other input is going to be E. And since we have this inverter bubble right here, it's going to be a bar over all of your variables. Get it? What would have happened now? Let me just erase this for a second here. Suppose we drew it differently. Suppose instead we drew it like this. We put an inverter bubble on this one. What would the output here be? The output here at this point would be C or D bar, wouldn't it? And then if you're going to look at the input, let me just connect this here. If you're going to look at the output here, it's going to be C or D bar and it, I'm sorry, ORD I don't remember that, it's ORD, the plus sign is ORD, ORD it with E that's not the same thing let me show something to you just a simple OR gate coming through these inverter bubbles could be on the inputs and they can be on the outputs, right? This is X, Y. What's the output here? X or Y bar. Get it? Okay. Now, let me draw this one. Those are two inverter bubbles, okay? So there's no inverter on the output, but there's two inverters on the input. What would that be? That would be X bar or Y bar. That would be the expression. Now what would happen if we did have if we did have an inverter bubble here? What would that be? Well if you have an inverter bubble on your output this has to go over everything. Get it? So that would be your expression. So why don't we try this? Tell me what the expression would be here, all right? What's the expression? Pause the video and give it a go. Okay, so what's this one right here? This is going to be, this output right here is going to be A or B. 
bar, right? So we know one of the inputs to here into this second gate right here is going to be A or B bar, right? That's one of them. Then you have your other input, which is simply a C, right? And since you have this inverter bubble on the output, you're going to have a bar over everything. Get it? Make sense? Okay. Very good. Very good. So, let me ask you this question. Here's your A and your B, okay? But you see the B is connected to A, right? So, let me just pull that out of here. If your B is connected to A, what's Y going to equal? This is simply going to be A bar, right? How do we figure that out? Well, let's draw the truth table. What's your truth table for your AND gate? We have A, we have B, and we have Y, right? Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Okay, now the truth table for an AND gate, this is going to be 0, 0, 0, and 1, right? Now, a NAND gate where you include this one, that's going to be 0. Now since we tied A and B together, it's only going to be this case or this case, correct? Because in these, in both of these right here, uh, A and B are different values and that can't happen if you tie them together. So we aren't worried about that case. So if A is a 0, the output is a 1. If A, if I said a is a 1, the output is a 0. That, you just made yourself an inverter. So this is the same thing as this. Get it? Because if you have A coming in here, what do you have coming out? A bar, right? Which is exactly what you have here. You can do these kind of exercises with a NOR gate as well come out with a similar similar uh, output. So finally, let's draw a larger circuit, shall we? So let's draw something like this. If we have a gate, an AND gate, So we have an input, now we're going to take this output, one to another. Give it a try and tell me what the output is, and then we'll do it together. All right, so the output here of this AND gate 
is going to be a dot b, right? The output of this AND gate here is going to be what? a dot b dot c. Agreed? Then you go through an inverter, which is this one right here. You're going to have a dot b dot c with a bar over it. Get it? So now you're getting better at making circuits out of other circuits and understanding this logical the logical function here, right? You're deriving it based on the gates, all right? Now there's one gate we haven't yet talked about. And this is called the exclusive OR gate. The exclusive OR gate looks very similar to an OR gate. However, the input looks like this if I drew it well. It has two of them here at the beginning. Two, two little curves are what I'm trying to show you here. Two curves, right? One, and here's the other one, two. So if you have A, B here, the output is going to be A, B, and it's a, it's a plus sign with a circle around it, okay? That's what I'm drawing there. I'm going to make it a little better for you there. All right, what's the truth table? Well, let's draw it out. A, B, what do we have? Zero is zero, one zero, zero one, one one, okay? The output Y is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay? There's your truth table for your exclusive OR. And by the way, they also make an exclusive NOR. And that's this. the symbol it just has an inverter gate and that would simply be one zero zero one get it and this would be a b with a bar over it so assuming this was a was B. All right, everyone. I hope this video has been helpful to you. See you soon. All right, everyone. Let's try this. Here's a problem for you. All right, so we need to create a truth table for the below circuit. So how many inputs are there? Inputs are right here, all right? So obviously you have four, right? You have A, B, C, and D, right? So let's draw the truth table here, shall we? A. You know what, I'm going to have to move this Well, I'm going to draw this right like this. A, B, C, and D, right? And you know something? I'm going to need to have quite a bit of space for this one, all right? Let's just give it a go, what we have here. Let's bring it across. Let's 
bring it down. How many inputs does it have, the number? It's four, right? So if we have four inputs, two to the four, what does that equal? If you said 16, you're right. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, got it? So that means we're gonna have 16 rows here, right? So the first row, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? By the way, we're going to use most of this. I'm going to say we're going to have to have 8 here. We're going to have to have... I'm going to take up quite a bit of space here on this, on this right side here. We'll make this one be Y. So we have 0. 0, 0, 0. Then we have what? 1, 0, 0, 0. Then we have what? 2, which is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. And then we'll have 3, which is 1, 1, 0, 0. Get it? Now let's do the next group of 4, shall we? I'm sorry. Let me get that off there for you. I'm trying to make these look like zeros and keep it neat. So now, if you, if you look at the decimal, this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three, right? So the next one's going to be four, right? So it's... Here we go. Four is what? Zero, zero, one, zero, right? Five would be what? Let's change that zero a little bit, make it neater, shall we? Space is a premium here when you're writing these things. There. Five will be one zero one zero right what's six zero one one zero and what's seven one 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 do you get it there's the next group and this was in decimal this was what four five six seven okay so the third group is going to be oh I'm sorry this is a mistake that's seven doggone I didn't mean to do that got it all right now the next one would be what? I'm going to start at 8, right? 0, 0, 0, 1. 9 is what? 1, 0, 0, 1. Alright, that's 8. That's 9. The next one is what? 10. What's 10? 0, 1, 0, 1. And then what do we have? 11. 1, 1, 0, 1. There you go. Okay, that's 11. Now what do we have left? One last group of 4. It's going to be 12. It's going to be 13. Fourteen and fifteen. So this one we have to. We are at eleven. So the next one's going to be twelve, which is going to be zero, zero, 
one, one. Thirteen, one, zero, one, one. Fourteen, zero, one, one, one. And fifteen will be what? One, 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 one. Notice we have 16 rows, right? And they always start from 0. That's why you go from 0 to 15 and not 1 to 16. Get it? So the number of rows is 16, but the actual values are in, in decimal are 0 to 15. All right? So let's look at this now. You're looking at your inputs over here, right? I'm over here now in this, this section of your, your drawing here. So if A and B are both 0, if A is 0 here, 0, and B is 0, it means they're both low. Well, what's the output going to be here? If you said 0, you're right. Got it? And that means the input to this gate here this input would be 0, right? Now this is another AND gate. Now if you recall from an AND gate, both A and B have to be high for the output to be high. And that can never happen as long as one of the inputs are 0. Get it? So when A and B are both 0, a and B are both zero, as they are in this whole group right here. Right? Actually, well, let's let's just stick here. So they're they're zero from here. All four of them. The output here is going to be zero, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Get it? Now, let me go back here. Let's just erase these things. So we took care of that part, right? Now we're on the second group here. We have 0 and 1, right? So now we're here at this part. If you notice, A and B are 0 and 1. So if A is 0, B is 1, what's the output? Remember, for an AND gate, both A and B have to be 1, so that's still going to be 0, isn't it? Well, what's coming in here to your gate, then, is going to be a 0, and this can never be high, right? Because it's an AND gate as well. So that means all four of the, all, the next four are all going to be 0 as well. It doesn't matter what C and D are, right? So let's do it here. 1, 2, 3... Four. Got it? Now, how about we reverse this? Instead of A being 0 and B being 1, suppose we reverse it now to A being 1 and B being 0. It's the same, isn't it? The output would still be 0, right? So this group here would result in the output always being low or zero. Got it? Now, guess what? Now we're getting to some fun things, right? If A is equal to one, and B is equal to one, that means the output's going to be 1. Okay, finally we're at a point now where we know that if this input of the AND gate is a 1, then we know it's going to output a 1. So now let's look at the next part here. We have C and D are 0, 0. If C and D are 0, 0, if this is 0 and this is 0, Right? What's the output of this NOR gate going to be? Well, it's a NOR, right? So the output here would be a 1, wouldn't it? At this point. But you're going through an inverter here, which would make it an 
is zero, wouldn't it? That's an inverter gate right there. So, zero and one, this would result in a what? A zero, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, that's a zero, zero, zero. Now if we have it zero, one, if D is equal to one, Now, does it change anything? No, it doesn't. Because zero, actually it does, I'm sorry. It would be a zero, one. The output of an OR would be a one, but since it's a NOR gate, it would be a zero, wouldn't it? And if that's a zero, that means this is gonna be a one, wouldn't it? And a one, one, Going into this AND gate would give you a 1. Isn't that beautiful? Right? So now, what about the next one? If it's 0, 1, if, if it's 1, 0. In other words, if I change these. Would that change anything? No, it wouldn't, right? Because these two inputs would be opposite. The output would still be, of the NOR gate would be low. And then it would be go, go through this inhibit, inverter, which would make it high. So you would have a high, high going into an AND gate, which would give you Y equals high. That would be a one. Make that a one now. What happens if they're all ones? A one, a one would give you a zero, right? Because remember, it's a NOR gate. Zero, it would be inverted to a one, so this would be a one as well. And that same thing. So if you look at it, the only way that this this section here, the only one that's a zero is 12 and that's when both C and D are 0 right let's just check our work both C and D are 0 if they're both 0 you know the output here would be a 1 we're doing this again I always check my work if I go through things right 1 it would come back be inverted it would turn to a 0 and then the output would be a 0 and that's what we have so there's your truth table for this circuit you see how I did it? All right, everyone. Let me draw up another circuit, and we're going to do another exercise. Give me one sec. All right, so this next circuit's going to be rather interesting, right? We have a... I'll just start it right over here. Here's your A and your B. your AND gate comes out A, B do you see D? this do you see D here C and D. Why don't you draw this circuit along with me? Give you some experience in drawing these circuits. Now, this one's going to go through another inverter.
Got it? There's our new circuit. Remember, this, great, this gate right here we just talked about, that is an exclusive NOR, right? So, if you have forgotten the truth table for that, if we have C and D and Y, why is a generic name for the output? That's all. I'm not. I should change that. I don't want you, want you to get confused. I'll just say C and D, and then uh, I just put out here, whatever the output is, right? So we have zero zero one zero zero one one one. Got it. So the expert the truth table for this gate it's right here now normally it would be zero one one zero but since we have this inverter bubble right here it's going to be the complement right let's call it out bar so it's going to be one Zero, zero, one. Get it? So this is really what we can expect from the output, okay? Now there's something I want to show you here. If you notice we have an inverter bubble right here, I just right there, and you also have an inverter here right after it. Those cancel each other out, don't they? So really you could redraw your circuit and simplify it you can redraw it this way can't you folks whenever you can simplify something do it it's always better so in that case What we can do then is just remove this section right here. We don't need it anymore. And there is your truth table for that gate, okay? So now, how many inputs do we have? Four. A, B, C, D. Let's draw this line down if I can keep So this will be zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, and one, one, zero, zero. Okay, there's your first four. Let's do your second four. Let's do your second four here. I gotta try to keep those straight. So it's gonna be zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. One, 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 zero. That's your second four, right? Let's do the fourth group of four, or the third group of four, okay? Here we go. Zero, 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 one. Nine is one, zero, zero. Ten, zero, one, zero, one, and eleven, one, one, zero, zero. 
finally I'm sorry I made that mistake again I always make my guess my mind wanders I don't know what's going on here so check always check your work when you're writing these things sometimes your mind can wander now let's do the next one okay finally sorry about that folks <laughs> zero zero one 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 zero one one zero one 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 and one 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 okay there's your truth table all right when you write a truth table like this check your work look just look at the patterns zero one zero one right it alternates all up and down the first row get it the next one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one get it the next one is four zeros four ones four zeros four ones and the next one is eight zeros and eight ones looks reasonable right okay <clears throat> so again let's use the same method we did before with a and b if a is zero or B is zero, if they, if, right? Then the output's going to be zero of your AND gate. So this will be zero, which means your input's going to be zero, which means Y will be zero, right? So quite simply, one, two, three, four. Same thing for the next group of three, right? One, two, three, four. Next group, same thing. One, two, three, four. Finally, we get to this fourth group. Now, with the fourth group, we know that's a one and that's a one, so this is going to be a one. So, this will be, it, Y will be high whenever this input is a one, right? So, when's it going to be a one? It's only going to be a one at these two places, isn't it? Because the truth table says that this is zero. I don't know where to draw it. I'll just I'll just do it for you. Get it? Because when C and D are both zero, as it was in this case, the output zero, so you know Y is going to be zero. In these two cases, when either C or D are a 1, the output's going to be a 1. That's what those two are. And finally, when it, they're both 1s, as in this case, if the output's a 0, so Y is going to be 0. All right, so there is an example of how you can solve and get the, the expressions for a circuit. All right? I even showed you how to simplify that there, right? So many times if you have a circuit, if you can simplify it, simplify it before you start going through and building the truth table. It will make it much easier for you. All right, everyone. I hope this has been helpful to you. And I will then see you on the next video. Have a good day. Bye now.